Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. In our previous episodes, we focused on the liturgy of the Word where we listen to the merciful God speaking to us through the sacred readings. Today, we will present to you the liturgy of the Eucharist where we witness the self-sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb of God, for the sake of our salvation. So come, join us. Let us enrich our knowledge of the Holy Mass, the source and summit of Christian life. Friends, in the Liturgy of the Word, our eyes focus on the ambo as the Word of God is proclaimed to us. In the Liturgy of the Eucharist, they turn to the altar as the Word made flesh offers His body and blood as living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the altar is used by the priests as a place of sacrifice for animals offered to God during their worship at the temple. But when Jesus came, He redefined sacrifice. He, as high priest, offered Himself as a perfect sacrifice to reconcile humanity with God. He accomplished this on the cross and in His resurrection. The altar takes us back to two significant places and events of our faith. First, at the upper room where the Last Supper was held. On the night before he was betrayed, he gathered his apostles to celebrate the Passover meal. It is also at this moment when he instituted the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist as remembrance of his great sacrifice. Second, at Mount Calvary, where he stood between heaven and earth, as the high priest reconciling humankind to the Father, offering his body and blood as the perfect sacrifice. The altar is the cross. On the cross, Christ performed the perfect sacrifice out of obedience to the Father and out of love for humankind. He is the Lamb of God that has no blemish, the only sacrifice acceptable to God. While on the altar, the Church, the body of Christ, commemorates and performs the same sacrifice of Christ in the sacrament of the Eucharist, where we offer and receive the sacramental body and blood of Christ. This beautiful bond of the altar and the cross is the reason why near the altar, behind, Above or on it, a cross with the image of the crucified Christ is mounted. The cross itself reminds and explains the altar on it. Christ offered his life as a sacrifice. You have received the bread we offer you. One must understand that the altar is not an ordinary table. It is consecrated in the same way that we were initiated to the Christian faith. It is designed to be special, decorated, adorned, and maintained. It is given veneration, a profound bow, a kiss by the ordained, and it is incensed. It is dedicated to the sacred purpose of celebrating the Eucharist. In the practice of the early Christians, each time they celebrated the Mass, they brought ample amount of bread and wine not only those intended for consecration, but also for the feeding of orphans, widows, and the homeless. They also brought some of their harvests and livestock to be shared with the poor through the church. In this simple rite of the Mass, the concern and charity of Christians to one another, especially to the poor, are expressed. Up to our time, we still give gifts for the poor, oftentimes through monetary offerings. The sum gathered is used by the church for charitable works, pastoral programs, and the maintenance of the church. The offerings are brought forward. It is a praiseworthy practice that the bread and wine are presented by the faithful. The offerings are received and accepted at an appropriate place by the priest or by the deacon. Then, the priest or the deacon carries the offerings to the altar. 
The procession is accompanied by an offertory chant that conveys what is happening in the rite. It continues until all gifts have been placed on the altar. The bread and wine are placed on the altar accompanied by prayers, which are spoken aloud if there is no singing of an offertory chant. The prayers said express the truth that the bread and wine offered also come from God as fruits of the earth and products of human labor. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. In more solemn celebrations, the priest presider incenses the gifts, the cross, and the altar to signify the church's offering and prayer rising like incense in the sight of God. After the preparation of the gifts, the priest presider will invite the assembly to join him as they pray over the offerings. Formerly, the prayer goes this way, Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. But in the new translation of the Roman Missal, which will take effect come Advent of 2012 here in the Philippines, our sacrifice is replaced with my sacrifice and yours. In the Eucharistic prayer, we accomplish the giving of thanks, the Eucharistine, after which the whole celebration takes its name. In the most solemn prayer, the priest calls upon the people to lift up their hearts towards the loving and merciful Lord who accomplishes His saving mystery. He associates the people to His prayer as He addresses the Father through the mediation of Christ and with the help of the Holy Spirit. The new translation of the Roman Missal rendered the Latin ut meum ac vestrum sacrificium that actually means my sacrifice, which is also your sacrifice, to my sacrifice and yours, replacing the former rendering our sacrifice. The response of the assembly affirms the church's teaching of one sacrifice in Christ, the Immaculate Victim. Hence, in order to bear spiritual fruits in the lives of the faithful, they must unite their hearts and minds to it. There is a small addition of the word holy to the response. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all of His holy church. The prayer of the gifts that follows the dialogue is recited from the Missal. In earlier times, it was known as secret prayer, a literal rendering of the Latin word secreta. It is derived from the Latin verb cicernere, which means to separate or to set apart. Only a small portion of the bread and wine offered by the faithful was placed on the altar for consecration. The rest was given to the poor and the needy. Thus the term secret prayer due to the small portion of offerings that was set apart for the use in the Holy Communion. The secret prayer is followed by the most important part of the Eucharistic celebration, the Eucharistic prayer. The word Eucharist comes from the Greek word eucharistine, meaning thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. The Eucharistic prayer is the center and the highest point of the celebration. It is the prayer of thanksgiving, benediction, and sanctification. Further, this prayer showcases the community's participation 
with Christ in confessing the great deeds of the Father and in the offering of sacrifice. Thus, it requires that each must listen to it in silence and with such reverence. Your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his arms. Friends, the use of the small portion of bread and wine offered in the Mass for the Holy Communion leads us to generosity towards the poor and the needy. We take less so we can give more. Let us always remember that sacrifice is the language of generosity. This is what Christ taught us when He offered and sacrificed His life for us. We hope that you continue to join us as we revisit and better understand the Holy Mass. Join us again, dear brothers and sisters. Till our next meeting, may the good Lord bless us all.